Hey, Adrian, welcome back to CBM Calling live, our first live broadcast in 2021. And uh, we're celebrating an almost bit of an anniversary. Um, Hard to believe. Week, right? When's the last time we had lunch together? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, well, for the people who have forgotten who we are, I'm Gordon Brew. I am the team lead of content and design. And this is my dear colleague, much missed, Adrian Gardner, who <laughs> is the, what are you now? You had a job title Hello. change. What are you? Uh, Director of Canadian Partnerships. There we go. All right. And we've got a uh, producer in the booth. John Williams is here. Hello. Yep. Say hi, John. John's hi. here. John is making everything work and uh, keeping all the wheels greased in the back end for, for the two of us. And it's much easier when John is live because when we can just uh, refer to him and ask him to put some things up. And we are going to be putting some things up. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's coming up in uh, CBM calling and what's happening um, in both of our departments this year, things you can look forward to, things that are coming up very soon, in fact. Um, but where were we going to start today, uh, Adrian? Well, I mean, it's hard to believe it's been almost a year now that, well, actually it has been a year now that most of our staff who would have been based at the Mississauga office have been working primarily um, remotely, primarily from home. Um, yeah. You know, there was a bit of a break in the summer where we could get in maybe a day a week and things were better. But for the most part, we've been been remote and marking that anniversary, wanted to say, uh, we asked staff this morning, we'll share that in a minute, um, what they've enjoyed or not, not enjoyed so much. But let me start, Gordon, what have you either enjoyed about this time or not enjoyed well, so much? Well, as an introvert, and, and having run a business from my home for many years, this is pretty natural for me. Um, the kids are grown up now, so there's not little kids. I can't believe when I see our colleagues on there and the little kids that are in the house and go, oh my gosh, I could not do that. So working from home has not been a problem. I really enjoyed not having to commute because my commute uh, to the office can be uh, a long one, mm -hmm. a grueling one on uh, 401 that never seems to get finished as far as the construction goes. So I haven't. I sure have not missed that, but it, I have missed lunches. <laughs> so uh, yeah, either you and I going for lunch, we have a couple of groovy spots that we like to hit once a week or so. So yeah, connecting and having lunch with folks in the office. Yeah. yeah. And I miss you, John. <laughs> John's, John's the, unfortunately John's the only like extrovert on our team it's John's true. the guy that actually really appreciates being around everybody and people being in the office the rest of my team are all introverts they're yeah. so happy <laughs> even Christine who's on this call helping out in the back end <laughs> very silent right now she is not chirping yet. <laughs> it's true what have you Adrian what have you uh, what have you either appreciated or, or oh. not appreciated I mean working from home not so much from a work perspective, but I have enjoyed um, saving some money because I have finally decided that I am no longer paying a barber <laughs> to cut what's left of my hair. So oh. it's been a year now of not spending any money on haircuts. Um, I don't I miss think you're actually you. taking Mine's a shot a... at me. I think you're actually taking <laughs> a shot at me. Look at this is a horror show. You had to bring it up. Yeah. You had to bring it up. <laughs> I'd trade with you, but um, I miss being with our churches. I miss being with our, our global partners. I miss interacting and seeing, um, the, you know, the fruit of the work that we're doing around the world. Uh, I miss hanging out with people at the office in terms of lunch and just the, the great conversations that happen. But uh, there's been a lot of good things too in this season and thankful for how God has continued to you know, keep us together as a team. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We've been definitely... very, very fortunate. Like, you know, my team who helps um, the rest of the organization in a lot of ways around some of the uh, IT and the connectivity. And we were already early adopters, my department and then your department. So we were already pretty functioning pretty well, even while we were in the office using the technology that was keeping us connected. But once we were all working from home, uh, we found it quite easy. I know you guys found it pretty easy, at least to stay connected. But for sure, I have missed so much 
and I know you have, of just, yeah, being with our partners or being on the field or visiting with beneficiaries. I've been posting on my Instagram feed some of my trip from India and being with Siraj and CP and John Chan, who's watching us right now. Shout out to you, John, <laughs> and our trip to India together. So yeah, I have missed, uh, yeah, I really miss that part of, of the joy yeah. of my job of getting to be out and uh, to tell some of those stories by taking the pictures and capturing the video. So you have, uh, we have, a week. go ahead. No, I was going to say the good news is like that work is continuing. It's just you and I haven't been able to yeah. physically see it and, and be part of it, but uh, thankful for the way our partners continue to serve vulnerable people in this season. We have a number of people. We're gonna, let's show that video of the staff because, as yeah. you mentioned, we did ask our staff uh, today. We were in chapel together with uh, the doctor, good doctor Daryl Johnson, who we're going to hear a little bit about later on. We're going to share some news. But uh, post uh, our, our time in chapel, we captured this video. John, you want to uh, roll that? I really love that I can sleep an extra hour in the morning because I don't have to take public transportation to get to the office. I miss being in the office because I'm very tired of Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and I would like to one day be able to see people face to face. I love wearing comfy pants and slippers all day long. I really love the freedom and flexibility and you know, but one thing that I don't like is the isolation. I love the new um, five-second commute from my bedroom to the dining room. I love the extra time with my kids since I don't have to commute. I'm home when they get off the school bus. I've had six months working from home, engaging with my teenagers in a strong way, and now I've had six months of being one person who gets to come to the office every day. Being alone is not always the best, but I like having a dedicated workspace. I love not wearing shoes, watching the sun rise from my desk instead of driving, the great connections with our global staff, but I miss seeing people. I love that it's much easier to pick a, an outfit every day. And um, I don't like how my family room explodes with toys every day. <laughs> I love my non-rushed walks with my dogs every day and I'm getting a little sick and tired of my basement walls. I miss all my co-workers but I really like my new co-worker. It keeps my feet warm. I love not having to commute on the 401. I love that I can play with my nephew during break. Since we can't hug anyone, I have come to embrace the hugs I get during the workday from my little guy unexpectedly. I love that my commute is so short and honestly most of it is taken up playing with the cat here on the way down. I have loved uh, sharing my workspace with my granddaughter when she's uh, schooling from home and uh, hot lunches every day. Love the uh, panoramic view from my condo that I'm enjoying now behind me. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I miss the windows in my office because I have not had access to sunlight from my basement for the past year. So I really miss that and I really miss having lunch with my colleagues. Great to see um, people in the comments. Uh, some of my uh, pastors are here. So my current pastor, uh, Paul Middlestadt at Kings Community Church in North Oakville. Thanks, Paul, for, for watching and wishing us well in the comments. Maybe you can post as well how, how you have adapted in this year and what's been a highlight for you and maybe lowlights. And good to see Edward and Beverly Powell watching from uh, beautiful Grand Bay Westfield, New Brunswick. Uh, I've worked with Edward at Grand Bay Baptist Church for a number of years, so uh, great to see you here, and greetings as well. Uh, They're keeping track of you. Your pastors are, <laughs> your pastors are checking in on you. <laughs> hey, um, I also know that John's got a slide together here. Um, two of our colleagues in just sort of the last mm -hmm. week, 10 days, Patricia and Christine, have passed is it the bar? Do you call it the bar when you become a citizen? No, I suppose not. 
but I know that they both got 19 out of 20 on their citizenship tests. And that means they are now only waiting to find out when they take their um, Pledge of Allegiance. Is that even what we do in Canada? What do we do? No, no. Christine's <laughs> not gonna uh, pipe in here, but it's, you have to, you have to say your vows or whatever it is in, to, in due time. What is it? Oath taking, oath taking. Oath taking, yeah. Oh. And it was a ah. citizenship test. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Well, congratulations, Christine. And to Patricia. Thank you. Yeah, wait, well mm -hmm. done. Yeah. All right, so here we are on CBM Calling. We're basically, what, 18th of March was the day that we went live last year and then carried on with a great deal of intensity early on in the pandemic, trying mm -hmm. to stay in touch every single day, every single day live. And then we whittled it down, whittled it down until we were at uh, once a week. So here we are starting essentially what is going to be season two of CBM Calling. And you and I have been talking a bit about that and talking about that with our teams. And so we basically decided that we're gonna focus on field staff and uh, staying the course. So you'll be getting updates here from field staff every couple of weeks mm -hmm. and starting to feature some projects specifically that field staff can introduce you to. So whether that's a, a justice program or uh, kids at risk, um, we're hoping to get yeah. you introduced to um, some of the work that's happening in the field and, and having them shoot some videos. So I don't know that you're gonna get that live every Tuesday. We're hoping to post sort of every Tuesday thereabouts but the intent is that you're still be getting the information and yeah. information hopefully that's valuable to your churches. Yeah, every week or every other week, meet your field staff, get to see um, more of the work that we're, we're doing around the world featuring some of those stories. I think it's gonna be, um, yeah, really, really good content. Um, see God at work through, through our partners. Yeah, absolutely. And that the work is still going on even, even though mm -hmm. these are challenging times indeed for, for all of us. Um, one of the things we're also going to try to, to um, do is we'll feature some stories from time to time that are kind of very high level newsworthy, etc. So mm -hmm. this and that might be not necessarily on a Tuesday. So I think this this Thursday, we're going to have an update. Jennifer has been speaking with some folks around the world um, about the situation in Myanmar right now. We get a lot of people wondering if they can help or how they can help or how they can pray. So. Jennifer's been reaching out to colleagues around the world. So we'll have an interview posted on Thursday um, that will start that. And hopefully another one next week that we are definitely monitoring that situation. We have a lot of uh, people that are concerned and certainly rightly so. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Next, you want to take the education piece or do you, yes? I'm looking, at my, I'm looking at my chicken scratching. Let's talk about active admission. So um, one of the new things that we started in the year of the pandemic in 2020, looking at how do we engage people, how do we engage youth groups, and uh, had this idea to do a virtual um, virtual walk, run, bike-a-thon, uh, basically turned into any type of activity. Our, our executive director at the time, Terry Smith, decided to kayak for some crazy number of kilometers. <laughs> With snakes. Attacked, was attacked by a snake, it was, it was wonderful. <laughs> um, but it was a great success. And we're looking forward to doing that again uh, this year. So I guess at this point, we just wanna say save the date. Um, so that's gonna be July 19th to 23rd. This summer will be active in mission 2021. Um, the focus is going to be a little bit different. So maybe actually, John, why don't you show the video from last year, just to give people an idea of what we're talking about if they missed it. Sure thing. So really looking forward to uh, doing active admission again this year. But like I said, the focus will be different. So last year, uh, we focused on providing uh, clean water through composting latrines. Uh, 
I guess the, the water wasn't in the latrines, but because the latrines were in El Salvador, uh, the water table didn't, was not polluted and um, made a really significant difference. But this year, as you started to say, we're shifting um, and the focus is going to be on education. So I don't know if you want to say a bit more about what that looks like. Yeah, well, we have a number of educational resources we've been producing for a long time. Kids care material. We call it kids care. It's uh, um, Sunday school, essentially um, lessons that teach kids about justice, uh, about uh, the needs of uh, those living in the global south and and understanding their context. It's been something has been well, well used and, and well received. And without churches meeting last year, we had a whole set of um, new lessons for 2020 and then you know basically nobody was going to use them so we just parked those but we're not parking them this year we're going to release um the set on uh, justice essentially kids learning about justice and learning about the different ways in which um the work that cbm does around the world is supporting the work of uh, uh, of justice and whether that is uh, gender education and learning how um, um various projects work so i'm looking at i'm looking at the screen so john do you have the kids care lesson you want to throw that up mm -hmm. there so you're going to be able to obviously yeah. download so these resources as you can all the time um, they're available on the website and we'll post that in the links below and those are all there they all have videos that go with them so it's a pretty robust system um, i recognize that churches are having to do Sunday school and youth engagement in different ways, but um, we trust that this will continue to be a, a real valuable asset as you teach kids about the world and CBM's work and how they can participate in it. Yeah, and that's great. can I share my other thing? Can I go that? first? Okay. You I want to just back up a bit because I, I feel like I didn't finish my thought on active admission <clears throat> before we jumped ahead to kids care. <laughs> We're going to be raising money for education, but not our kids care education project. We're going to be sending kids to school around the world. So whether that's at a student center in the Golden Triangle with tutoring programs uh, throughout India, um, school fees for kids at risk in Rwanda, uh, helping kids with their homework in, Ro in Bolivia, um, the focus of active admission this year is on um, kids' education globally through our partners. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. last year we worked on providing clean water through latrines. Uh, this year we're going to be sending kids to school and helping them succeed in school through our education projects. Sorry, you can go now. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, yes, and so one of those uh, um, projects, one of the projects we've been involved with for quite a long time is girls education and specifically in Rwanda, which we've done that um, for a number of years. And there is a book available that falls under this um, kids care umbrella, which is called It Starts Today. And it's the story of a girl and her joy in going to school. But she's taking her brother for the first time because uh, their mother received a, um, um, some training with uh, raising chickens and through raising the chickens, she was able to pull herself up out of um, poverty and start earning some money. And that money is uh, what's bought the kids' school uniforms and supplies. So it's a story of how we at CBM do development work with dignity through local church and empowering women. So there is, uh, it's a great story for kids. It's a great story of just the joy of what education is going to bring to her and her enthusiasm for it as she leads her brother to school. But it is the backstory is really how she got there, which is through empowering her mom. So we're I'm I, that's might be a little bit heavy. The book's a lot of fun. It was fun to uh, it was fun to write, and there is uh, uh, beautiful illustrations by uh, mm -hmm. Dolph Banza, who is an illustrator in Rwanda. So and, so Gord, you yeah. just kind of dropped that sentence as a sort of throwaway thing, but you said it was fun to write. So you're the author. Uh, uh, it starts yes. today. You wrote yes. this this kids book illustrated by. <laughs> a Rwandan illustrator yeah, Dolph. and mm -hmm. um, excited that um, we've worked it out and we've done some tests. We're going to be able to ship this anywhere in Canada to your home if you purchase it. The online order form will be up and the cost of that, including shipping, will be $25. $25. And there, I said it. <laughs> uh, you said it. It's done. And the majority of that uh, 
at least 20 of those dollars will go yeah. to the uh, kids education project. Yes, yes, that's right. And, uh, and we'll be talking more about this as we approach, as you say, active admission. And mm -hmm. uh, um, you'll be hearing more about the book. We have some things lined up. I talked with Louise today and she's going to be interviewing Dolph and showing kids how that book got illustrated, how to draw the characters themselves. So it's good. There's, a good, there's a lot coming. There's a lot coming. Cool. Um, yeah. Now, I, I have think, a question. Yes. Uh, you're the team lead for content and design and uh, don't put have put out a magazine for uh, many, many years. Yes. Gordon, what happened to what happened to Mosaic? Well, we had to make a bit of a pivot last year, as everybody else uh, did. So we worked on the magazine and we released, uh, ironically, the crisis response issue, which was planned <laughs> 18 months before, frankly, that we got hit with the pandemic and were shut down. So. Um, we actually pivoted our magazine and we produced it online as a download. Uh, so we had our first issue of Mosaic as a, as a download, an e-read view. Um, but we actually made a bit of a pivot. And if you didn't, I'm just going to, I'm trying to reach it in here in my drawer. Oh, this is live TV at its best. Oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> We've started producing something four times a year, which is called CBM Responding. So this is kind of a one-two uh, for the things that you can see here on um, CBM Calling Live mm -hmm. and the things that are happening. Um, we've been following up and, and publishing now. The first issue came out just in January. So if you don't have this, you can send an email to communications at cbmin.org and we will make sure you get it. It went out with tax receipts. Um, but there is, uh, there is some more copies we can send out. So stories in here of our field staff, uh, items in here uh, for prayer line. You're even in here talking about um, the, th the good things that we were last able to year. do for our churches last year. Yeah, so it's pretty rich content. And John's got a slide because one of these things, uh, one of the, the spreads in here was about your giving in 2020. And it, it just shocks me. I know we're gonna get mm -hmm. it up on the screen. I think John's got it up there now. When I speak with the IP department and we go back through and um, I get the numbers back. So to be able to report to donors that last year through, through their efforts in supporting the work of feeding hungry people, we fed 63,000 people last year. Wow. Like that's bonkers to me. <laughs> it's just so if you're not, if you're not receiving this magazine, we would like to get it to you. And like I said, communications yeah. at cbmin.org and we'll get that out to you. So That's incredible. what we're going to do is I'm going to keep producing the magazine this year. So there is four issues of that coming and it'll keep you updated um, about what's what's been going on. Joe Brady is gonna be featured coming up in the next issue. And we'll be talking about the, the incredible support that we received following the Beirut blast and the financial mm. support and the work that's being, um, being done and was done uh, following that. So yeah, you wanna get this. Just yeah, CBM responding is telling a lot of the stories of what's going on, reporting back. Uh, in Mosaic, you used to feature a lot of uh, thought pieces or theological discussions and articles on different topics. Where will that content live? Uh, going That's forward? going to live on the brand new website. And so the website is getting a full overhaul. We have been working with a consultant and we've been working through uh, the navigation and we've actually had about 50 of our uh, friends and donors looking at the website, navigating through it and giving us their feedback. So mm -hmm. we're really, uh, well, John's here on this call. So we're a bit overwhelmed with the work that's before us, <laughs> but it is going to give us a home and a new way to deliver what you were used to seeing in a print magazine now mm -hmm. online. And so the resources for past issues will be there, searchable database, et cetera. But there will also be another pivot. So I am in with John and several of our colleagues producing the video version. So Mosaic Magazine as a video for, a, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, John's and I are still working on it. We're gonna get it cut in the next couple of weeks and it'll get, some of it will get posted here on Facebook, but you'll be able to watch it both on the new website and on the YouTube channel. So it's themed the same way. This one is about hunger and will feature um, our folks that are working on the front lines in that regard. I had a great conversation and kind of co-hosted with uh, Julia um, Bowering from the uh, 
partnership team in our office. So we'll see how that goes. That my intent is to yeah. deliver three mosaics this year, but it'll all be video content so that you can watch it so those, and hopefully download the audio. Yeah, those important conversations, the deeper conversations are still going to happen. Absolutely. Uh, not in yes. a printed magazine. Absolutely. Yeah. Those thought those thought pieces will be getting posted as that new site gets up, which you know, all things going well is supposed to be up <laughs> in early early June, so you can watch for that. Um, John, do you want to play the little sting from what could be <laughs> Mosaic Magazine, the video magazine? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's done. All right. Okay, so Adrian, lastly, back over to you. We got some things coming up for our churches that we wanted to announce today. Yeah. Some of them know already, but why don't yeah, you tell they us should about know. That? But it's good to. I'm going to make sure you know. Uh, but just before I do that, I'm just looking here in the chat. Um, we have greetings from Hector Antonio Garcia ah. Santos from First oh, Baptist Church. Come on, uh, Sater Coluca El Salvador, and also. Uh, Patty Nacho from uh, Bolivia. That's great. Um, hello, thanks for being here. Um, you know, a lot of the talk, Gordon, in the news and as we track each day is on coming out of this pandemic. Uh, we're starting to think about how quick are we going to get the vaccine. Um, there's, you hear politicians saying things like there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're, we're almost there. Um, and one of the things we want to do uh, as CBM is call our churches to remember that the pandemic's ongoing, uh, the effects of the pandemic are ongoing, and it's still disproportionately affecting people living in poverty in the global south. Um, so we want to invite the church in Canada to stand in solidarity with our partners um, at an event called, fittingly, Solidarity Sunday. And that's going to be on April 11th. It's a Sunday following Easter. And it's an opportunity to hear from the field. It's an opportunity to pray together for uh, the needs of vulnerable people around the world. It's an opportunity to hear uh, really good quality uh, teaching from Dr. Daryl Johnson. And um, it's something we can do together as Canadian Baptists standing with our partners around the world. Um, there's different ways that churches can participate. So we recognize that not everyone is in the same situation across our country. Um, some people like my church uh, is completely online. Uh, we're you know, here in one of the harder hit areas of our country with COVID and we're still in a virtual, um, virtual services. And we are offering uh, to our churches a complete plug and play service, including worship from Louisville Worship including speaking from Daryl Johnson, all the information and stuff from the field, um, like we did at Christmas time with the Weary World yeah. Rejoices. That was However, one of some, my, that was yeah. a real highlight for me when I saw all of that come together, especially with the music and the preaching and then the updates from around the, around the field. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, really something to see that all come together. So I'm excited that we're going to do this a second time. Yeah, and some churches, um, for example, in in New Brunswick, where uh, COVID is not as big of an issue right now, they may be meeting in person. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're taking the field components and the updates and putting them together just like a five minute video. So a church that's meeting in person could show that five minute video and then take time as a congregation in person to pray for uh, our partners around the world. And then also some churches may, for whatever reason, it would, doesn't fit with their schedule. It, they're not going to take advantage of this. Um, we're going to stream it live through our own social media channels. So on Facebook and YouTube uh, at um, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, 4 p.m. in Vancouver, um, 5 p.m. in Alberta. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> you don't have to do all the time zones, it's 4 do you? 4 p.m. here. <laughs> 7, 8 p.m. in Atlantic Canada and 8.30 in Newfoundland. So, uh, that And if be... people want to, if um, all that went by a little bit quickly, where can people go? Who should they reach out to if they want more information, how they get their church plugged into this? Yeah, so they can 
let's just stick with the same email communications at cbmint.org is probably the easiest right. we've mentioned that one uh, and we can make sure you get whatever you need follow our social media channels it's all going to be there and it will all be available to download on march 26th yeah, john i don't know right. did you have a clip you wanted to show to kind of highlight what that could look like i showed them while you were talking about them oh so great again. oh man live tv mm -hmm. magic of live tv <laughs> Okay, so fun. that's awesome. So yes, um, somebody else was asking how they find out about when CBM calling is taking place. Every post that goes up on uh, here on Facebook is uh, about what's going on in the life of our um, organization, and and if there's uh, if there's anything happening, it's happening here on Facebook. Christine is oh. doing a great job of staying on top of projects and prayer line came out today and there's a press release mm -hmm. coming out tomorrow all that stuff you see here um, yeah. and if you need any more information you can reach out to us at communications at cbmin.org and who's this just before beth? It, yeah, who is this, this is beth she's yeah. the, the leader of the accns women's department in kenya oh my gosh we are international yeah, so. now wow <laughs> with our, that's our partner in in kenya um, that's great Great you're here, Beth. Oh, thank you, Beth. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, that seems as good a place to, to wrap I up, I suppose, as any. Uh, we've heard from uh, Beth in Kenya, and we've heard from um, Hector in El Salvador, and even Patty mm -hmm. Nacho uh, down in Bolivia. So thank you to our colleagues who are also tuned in, John and Randy, Sonia, Dennis, I think, is in here, Brenda. So we will look forward to being together, to eating together, mm -hmm. and uh, and pressing on with the mission that we've been told to. Good to see you. I'll see you on good another Zoom you. call probably, you know, within an hour. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks everyone right. for joining us and for um, yeah, journeying with us in, in this journey of partnership with God's global yeah. mission as we work with churches around the world. We hope that all of these things we've talked about today will be tools that your church and you as individuals can use to to be connected to that global work as we yeah. proclaim and demonstrate the good news of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. See you later. See Thank you, John. Thank you, Christine. See ya. Bye.